Alright, lots of people have been asking for this one and I'm really excited to show you because this is not so much a hoodoo work as it is a candle reading. Um, I get probably four or five messages a day asking me if I do readings and I quit doing tarot readings a little while ago, but I do still read candles specifically on the works that I do. So the big question then becomes how do you read candles? Now, <clears throat> some of you have heard me talk about that Hoodoo Delish actually started out of my frustration that there was not any good information on how to read candles collected in one place. And so I would have to go to blog after blog and, and book after book and person after person saying, what does this mean? What does this mean? Where have I seen this before? And it was very frustrating. And um, I am actually currently putting together a book on some of the things that you will see in um, in candle reading and how to do it, but I wanted to do a basic instructional video on how to set up a candle to be read. And then I'm going to edit this a little bit and try to put some photographs and some examples of some shapes that you might see in the video. So, what you're going to want for a basic candle reading, and keep in mind this is not specifically a heavy duty hoodoo work, this is just a basic candle reading. Um, you're going to want to get a good candle. Um, I like to use these. They're the, the six inch coach candles. And um, I'm going to use a red one because the person that I'm doing this for in particular has a question about their romantic life. So what we're going to do here is take the candle and I've already inscribed it across the the back side here with the name and the birth date of each person that I'm going to be doing this candle reading on. Now what we're going to do here is get a little bit of olive oil. I, I like to use olive oil when I'm just doing a candle reading. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, I bless this olive oil and anoint this candle and set it to give me clear and true answers about the couple in question. Let it guide me and let me see what is going on in their relationship and what needs to be brought forward, what needs to be done, what obstacles need to be cleared. Show me the truth of this situation, O oh God. And now I'm going to also add a few drops. This is a follow me oil because this particular situation we are working on bringing these people back together. So I'm going to do this in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I set this oil to draw these two lovers back together into a loving and faithful relationship and let this candle reveal what needs to be seen so that that may happen in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, as you see, this is like super, super simple work. This is, this is about as basic level as you can go. We are not adding herbs. We are not loading the candle. We are not writing a petition. It's a carve the candle, anoint the candle, pray over the candle, and then we're going to set and light the candle. So that is, that is the key when you're reading a candle. I would say especially if you're just starting with reading, it's better to keep just, you know, not to have any of the kind of frills and, and the, the additions. Like you, you'll see a lot of times I put the offerings on the plate and the candles and the herbs and all of that. And that's good, it's beautiful, but one side effect is that it does get more complicated to read the actual candle. Now when you've been doing it for a while and you're really comfortable with it, that's not a problem. But if you're just starting out, I recommend literally starting with a blank candle, just like this, anoint it and pray over it and nothing else. So we're going to do really quick here, just light it to get it going. Okay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, I light this candle to bring us the information we need about this couple, and I ask that the guides, ancestors, and angels, mine and both of these peoples, would come and reveal the information that we need to see what is going on in their relationship, what needs to happen for them to reunite, and what we need to know most importantly. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I'm going to let this candle burn down and just giving some basic instruction here. That's, that is how you put it together, but I'm going to give a little bit of information about how you read it. So go ahead and listen to me talk for the next couple of minutes here. Um, number one, in any situation where we're going to be reading this just a little bit backwards because you're look, you see, here's where I am. So in any situation with the candle, the most important thing, more important than the shapes actually, is the orientation of the candle. You need to know where the front is, which would be whatever side is facing you, the back, 
the left and the right. Those are very important. Now, as if you get into really complex readings, the diagonals are also important, but it's really more important to know that front and back, left and right. The front of the candle will be the part of the candle that is facing you. That represents the physical material world. It is going to deal with issues like sex, finance, housing, property. Um, to a lesser extent, it can deal with health, um, the physical body and the physical world. That's what this area down here of the plate represents. Now this up here, this side, the top, this is all things that are non-physical. Uh, a lot of books will simply say spiritual, but it's more than just spiritual. It's all things non-physical because this does cover the spiritual world, divine connections, magic, um, departed ancestors and loved ones, and soul connections, mental connections, dreams, but it also covers digital matters, electronic matters, and other things that are non-physical or not, not touchable in the physical world. So that zone up there at the top of the candle as you're facing it, that is where all of that non-physical stuff goes. Now, the left side over here, which, and again, I'm doing this backwards to you, so it'd be on your left-hand side, but the left side over here is the past. So, and, and we're, we're using the candle kind of like the cross point on this. So anything to the left of the candle, that's the past. And the farther out it goes toward the edge of the plate, the farther into the past it's reaching. Um, when you get stuff that like spills over the plate and blah, you know, goes way over to the left, that's like way, way from the past. It might even be from a past lifetime. Now the other side of the candle, the right is the future. And again, same principle, the farther out it is from the candle, the farther into the future it is. And again, spilling over the candle, if it's coming way out there, that is the long distant future, or it may again be another lifetime or something that's karmic. That's the general information about how to read the candle. So as it burns down, these are the things that you're going to want to take note of. First and foremost, how many hours from start to finish? Now, it's always good when you get a new type of candle to burn one candle down, just let it burn, no oils, no prayers, no nothing, just let it burn down and time it and see how long it takes. Uh, a lot of candle makers actually pride themselves on having their candles burn for a specific amount of time. That is considered a measurement of quality of candle in the candle industry. So you can even look on the box a lot of times if you're getting boxed candles or look at the manufacturer's specifics for the candle and it will tell you how long it's supposed to burn. But what you're going to want to do is take note of the time when this began and you're gonna to wanna to count the number of hours that it burns down. Now, this is presuming that you're doing a one day long reading, just a one candle. And if it burns more than one day, that's, that's another matter, but this is not a seven day candle. This is not a candle designed for multiple days or multiple burnings. It's just gonna be one straight all the way through burn. When you time it, you're gonna get a total number. It is really complicated to explain all the stuff that goes into the numbers involving candle reading, but here is a few of the basics. The first thing you need to know is whatever that number you get is, that let's say that this takes nine hours to burn, and it, it may take more, it may take less, but let's pretend that it takes nine hours. You are going to see results from the work you have been doing, or you're going to see the next phase, the next transition happening in a unit of time that corresponds to the number nine, so nine days, nine weeks, nine months. I don't usually see candles indicating years, to tell you the truth. Theoretically, it could also be nine years, but th that is so uncommon. I don't think I've ever had it happen. Literally, I don't think I've ever had that happen. I've been burning candles for a long time. I've never seen that one. So it could happen, but I don't think that's a big concern. Um, and it also could theoretically be nine hours. I have actually had candles where they burned down and it said, yeah, this is gonna be hours. I just got that intuitive feeling. And that's what you have to go with is kind of what your gut is saying. Is it hours, days, weeks, months? What is it that the candle is communicating to you? And use a little common sense too. You know, if, if you have a candle that burns down in nine hours and you know that you've got a court case that's about nine weeks away, then probably it's talking about results in about nine weeks. On the other hand, if you are doing a candle for fertility and you're trying to get pregnant and you're trying right now and you burn down for nine hours, then guess what? Your results are probably 
nine months away. And that's just common sense. You know, that that's not even a that's not even a magical thing, but that's the beautiful thing about hoodoo. It is a magical practice of common sense. So that's the first thing is the time that you spend on it. Calculate that time that it takes it to burn from bottom to top. Um, well, top to bottom. I don't, I don't have my directions right today. <laughs> but count that time. That's going to be the units of time that you're going to be required to see um, results. Now, there are a few exceptions to that rule. They are kind of frustrating. I'm going to list them. Any time that a candle goes past 24 hours, that is a different measurement. If it goes past 24 hours, that is one cycle. Past 48, that is two cycles. Past 72, that is three cycles. If we go past 72 hours, we're actually dealing with something completely different at that point. But any time that it goes past the 24 hour mark, you need to take into account the number of cycles and the actual number because at that point you're looking at not just units of time but number of cycles and the number of cycles is more important. So let's say that this candle took 48 hours to burn down and believe it or not I have seen little bitty candles like this take as much as three days to burn. Uh, they're not supposed to, they're not designed to do that and that's how you can really tell that spirit is involved is that that, that that number changes regardless of what science says the candle should be doing. So when you see it go past 24 hours, let's say it went to 48, that would mean that we were going to see two repetitions of some kind of cycle before we saw results. Now that may mean moon cycles, I've seen it mean moon cycles, it can mean pay cycles, um, especially if you're doing a work dealing with finances, getting a raise, getting a promotion, something like that. Very often it means pay cycles. It can also mean um, repetitions of a particular pattern. Um, in relationships, that one pops up a lot. Um, for example, you might have a pattern where things are going good and then there's a stupid argument and then someone gives someone else the cold shoulder and then there's a big makeup scene. And if you've got a cycle like that that's known in the relationship, then probably the candle is talking about two repetitions of that particular cycle. So those are just some of the examples. There's a lot more that you can tell from these specific numbers themselves and all kinds of other things with reading the timing of a candle, but I don't want this video to be seven hours long. So I'm gonna go over a few of the shapes that you might see while you are burning down this candle. And I'm gonna to try to stick the, um, the photographs for these on the screen so you can see them. And you can also find a lot of these examples on my page at Hoodoo Delish. Um, on Facebook, but the most common formations that you are going to see are the Trail of Tears. That is going to be a long strip of trails of wax coming down the candle, usually leaving droplets along the trails of wax. and it can be anywhere on the candle. There's usually multiple trails and multiple drops of wax that are forming like little bubbles on them. Trail of Tears usually means emotions are coming to the forefront, that there's going to be a lot of emotional release, and typically means that someone or more than one person in the situation is going to wind up crying before you see the results from your work. Um, so if you see a Trail of Tears in the past on the left side, that may mean there's been a lot of emotional hurt in this situation and that's going to have to be addressed. If you see it in the future, it means there's going to have to be some very emotional conversations and probably either the target or the person requesting the work is going to have some, some tearful nights, maybe even some cry themselves to sleep type nights before things are fixed. If you see it down on the physical side, that one's actually an interesting one because that one usually very specifically means crying physical tears but it often also means physical pain um, and that can be an indication that someone in the situation is suffering from illness or injury or chronic pain or even pain that's being caused by the magic in some way sometimes magic will use physical pain as a motivator it just it works with whatever's going to be best for each person and if you see trail of tears up here spiritually then that is an indicator that there may be some past life things or some um, some spiritual matters, some karmic matters that are very, very painful that are going to be brought to light and brought forward. Trail of Tears is actually usually a positive sign, but it's kind of letting you know something something painful is going to happen for something good to happen. 
So that's the Trail of Tears. Now, uh, another one that comes up a lot is the Scorpion. A Scorpion is when you get a big spike of wax and it bends over backwards. Backwards. Now, Scorpion has two separate meanings, one of which is not very common and mostly okay, and the other which is the normal one and not really a good thing. The first one is it can signify the zodiac sign Scorpio. I don't know why. I almost feel like the sign Scorpio is a little bit uh, a little bit perverse and just likes to show up, boom, when you're doing a work on somebody who has that in their chart. And it will just form this little loop of wax. And you're like, okay, all right, I get it. You're a scorpion. Hello. And that's that is a sign. If you if you are a Scorpio or if you are doing work on a Scorpio, that can be a sign that that particular energy is showing up in the work and being affected by the work. However, <laughs> unfortunately, 99.9% .9 of the time, the scorpion is not a good sign. It is usually an indicator for betrayal infidelity, uh, backstabbing, gossip. Um, the idea is somebody like going behind your back and doing something horrible. Um, if it appears on the left hand side, that would obviously be a betrayal about something in the past that this person um, either has been betrayed or is betraying or was betraying you in the past. Um, spiritually, it can indicate that someone is doing magic against you. Um, it can also indicate that somebody feels um, that they would be betraying their spiritual calling or their life's, like their life's purpose by connecting with you or responding to the magic. Um, over here on the, the bottom of the candle and the front of the candle, if it shows up over here, that would be a betrayal in the areas of sex or money. That is actually where they most commonly show up, is on the lower half of the plate. And then on the right side, that is a betrayal that has yet to come. Uh, and it can mean that the person has not betrayed you yet, but it can also mean they've betrayed you and you haven't found out about it yet. So basically when you see a scorpion, what you need to do is get a match or another candle, pray over it, anoint it with a blockbuster oil or a clearance oil, or if you don't have that, peppermint essential oil will work. Melt that sucker down and just pray over it and say, you know what, I banish this betrayal, I heal it, I cleanse it, I get rid of it, boom, gone, out of my life. And that's what you really wanna do just is to get rid of those. They just don't usually mean anything good. And I would say even if you are working on a Scorpio, just go ahead and melt it down just in case it is a betrayal because you can't change their zodiac sign with magic. You can change a betrayal with magic. So just err on the side of caution would be my thought there. So one more formation, and I'm gonna make this my last one because I could go on for hours and hours and hours. One more formation that we do commonly see with candles is what I call hooks or mountains. These are little spikes of wax that they just stand up, they won't fall down, they won't go away. And those indicate obstacles or things that are actually hooking, like if you imagine a hook yanked into to the situation and refusing to move away. I almost think of like a hook stuck in a piece of meat, yanking it backwards. They're, they're kind of nasty, but they are indications of obstacles that are not necessarily treacherous or emotional. Um, if you have mountains or hooks appearing over here on this side, and, and the difference between a mountain and a hook is very simple. A mountain is straight up and down. That's the most common kind. A hook bends inward toward the flame. Um, hooks are a little more stubborn than mountains in general, they dig deeper, but other than that, they mean exactly the same thing. On the left side of the plate, that is gonna mean something from the past is getting in the way of the results of your work. It's holding the person back or it's holding you back. It's blocking things. Up here, that means there's a spiritual blockage. That can be an indication that there has been magic done that is conflicting. Usually it would not mean that there's been magic done against the person, but it might mean that there's been magic done that's getting in the way of the magic you're doing now. For example, Let's say that this person did magic on themselves to make their career their top priority and allow them to be very successful and you're doing magic on them to make them stop working so much and spend more time with you. Those magics would be in direct conflict with each other and that might form a mountain. Um, down here at the bottom, when there's something here, that indicates a block in pretty much one of four areas. Geography, sex, money, 
or physical health. There's a blockage down here. It just doesn't usually mean much else. If there's a blockage down here that they can't get around or that is getting in the way of your work that has to do with one of those four areas. I see mountains form a lot in this area for people who are in long distance relationships. I also see mountains in this area form a lot for people who are dealing with major physical health issues. And finally, on the right side, that usually actually has a very simple meaning. If you have a mountain that is on the right side and it's not really up toward the top or up toward the bottom, it usually means you are not ready for what this magic will do. You need to prepare more. There's something in your life that is getting in the way. There's something that would be distressing or destroyed or problematic if this magic came to pass the way you want it to. And the best thing to do when you get a mountain over here is actually, number one, do melt it down, but two, get a good reading. Go to a reader that you trust or, or somebody that you can talk to and get some spiritual guidance and try to find out what that thing is because that's actually usually a positive warning. Like your spirits are saying, hey, look, we can do this, but if we do, there's gonna be all kinds of other problems and you need to fix these other things first. So that's what it means over there. Any other place on the plate, I would say, again, Blockbuster oil or clearance oil or peppermint oil on a candle or a match, melt it down, pray it away, get rid of it because you don't need it in your life. So those are the things that I'm covering with the candle reading. And if you have any more questions about this, definitely stick them down in the comments below. I love you guys and I really wanna hear from you. We are over 700 subscribers, I think. I think last time I looked and last time I said how many subscribers I had, I was like totally wrong, but I think we are over 700 subscribers now and you guys are awesome and amazing, wonderful people. So go ahead and try one of these out for yourself. And I also do offer free candle analysis for people just to kind of give you my opinion of what I see in your own work. If you would like to do that, there is a very specific way you should do it. Um, number one, take pictures from the front whenever possible so that I know where the front is. Like I said earlier, the orientation is actually more important than the actual shapes that are in the magic. Um, let me see where the front of that candle is and I need to see it from the very beginning all the way to the very end. Usually four or five photos taken at intervals are enough, but you can send that to me on my email, which is hoodoodelish at gmail.com or on my Facebook page through Messenger, which is facebook.com slash hoodoodelish. And if you go like that page, there's all kinds of stuff on there of the work that I'm doing currently and different spell ideas. And I've been doing a series lately where I'm posting little hoodoo baths that you can do for just amping up different energies in your life. And two more things. I announced this on Facebook a couple of days ago, but my website, hoodoodelish.com, is going to be open and ready for business and ready for enjoyment and ready for sharing. October 31st, so Halloween, that's going to be opening up and... Um, I am hoping to have on there a section on candle reading. I also would like to have some products and things available for you guys and of course areas where you can look at my professional services if that's something you're interested in. Uh, so that's one announcement. The other thing too is I have now a group on Facebook, a Hoodoo group. It is designed to be a teaching group, a sharing group, um, just for everybody to get in there and share some really good ideas. We've got about 200 members now. It is super active and people are really nice and friendly and sweet. So if you're interested in learning more about Hoodoo, go to Facebook, find it. The, the name of the group is just Hoodoo, and I will approve your request to join. Anyway, I need to let you all go now because I'm running out of memory on my camera, but I love you guys so much. Send me a message, like, comment, share, subscribe. Bye-bye.